Okay, thank you very much. So I'm going to talk about the uh, joint work with uh, Grigory Garkusha. And uh, the main idea uh, of this work is to construct an explicit fiber replacement of uh, certain uh, spectra in the stable Mativic modal category. So in this talk, we're going to work over the base field key, uh, which is infinite and perfect field of characteristic different from two. And we'll be interested in the stable uh, motivic model category. Right, we're going to need uh, two descriptions of this category. Either we can think about this as a category of P1 spectra or the category of GM S1 by spectra. And um, uh, the main, yeah, the main uh, target is to construct uh, explicit uh, fibrin replacements of certain spectra. Uh, in this stable Pativic model category. Uh, so uh, the main example, the main motivating example is the algebraic cabodism spectrum. Uh, MGL. Uh, that's the spectrum that consists of the spaces, uh, which are the tom spaces uh, of the tautological uh, vector bundles of rank i. So tau i here is the vector bundle over the uh, Grassmannian i, where Grassmannian i is the co-limit of Grassmannian of uh, subspaces of dimension i in the space of dimension n when n goes to infinity. So then there is a tautological uh, vector bundle over this Grassmannian and then the tom space of this uh, tautological vector bundle is the, uh, is the space in the uh, algebraic cabodium spectrum uh, MG. And let me first formulate the, our main result for the spectrum MGL and then I'm gonna talk a bit uh, about similar spectra that look similar to MGL that also consist of the uh, tom spaces of certain vector bundles. That's what we are calling the uh, Mativic tom spectrum. So let me start with the construction, with the explicit construction of the fiber replacement uh, of the spectra in the Mativic, in the stable Mativic model category. So for this construction, I need uh, several steps. Uh, the first step, I need to introduce uh, the notion of omega correspondences. So if u and x are smooth varieties over k, I'm gonna uh, introduce omega correspondences from u to x as a groupoid uh, of the certain objects. So the objects look like this, these are the heads, u, z, x. Uh, where the map P from Z to U uh, is finite, uh, flat, and locally complete intersection morphism. And Z here is some scheme uh, over K. It not need to be reduced, it's just a certain scheme over K that's uh, with, a, with a locally complete intersection map to U, which is finite and flat, right? So these are the objects and isomorphisms in this group where it adjusts the usual isomorphisms uh, of these heads. If we have two such heads, Z and Z prime, an isomorphism between them is just a map that can be used with both projections and both maps from the top of the heads uh, to the variety X. 
So that's the groupoid, and then uh, for every uh, smooth variety U, we can associate the nerve of the groupoid core omega from U to X, and this is gonna be a pre sheaf of simplicial sets. So that's the first object uh, I need to introduce. Then we can make, we can construct a fiber replacement from this object uh, just in two more steps. So the second step I need to do, I need to apply the uh, simplicial, the singular simplex construction by C star. So C star and core omega of UX. Uh, that's a simplicial object that looks like this. It's uh, so it's zero simplices are just curve and core omega ux. It's one simplex, one simplices is n core omega of u cross delta one over k into x. Two simplices are n core omega of u cross delta two k x and so on. So then that's again, is gonna be a simplicial uh, pre sheaf uh, and delta one and delta two here are just algebraic simplices. So delta one K is just a spectrum. K X zero X one where zero plus X one is equal to one. Delta two K is the algebraic two dimensional simplex. And so on. So we apply this uh, simplicial construction to this uh, nerve of the groupoid of the uh, omega correspondences. Uh, excuse me, Sasha, there's a question yes. for you. Um, what does the omega stand for? Uh, omega. Uh, omega here is just a reference to the cobordism. It really, I mean, it's just for some historical reasons. There's no, no real reason to call it core omega. That's just how we call it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so the next step, uh, we need to make it uh, an S1 spectrum. So we're gonna construct a fiber replacement uh, in the category of GM S1 bispectra. It arises naturally uh, as the GM S1 bispectrum rather than uh, P1 spectrum. So here we constructed just a uh, uh, the spaces, the simplicial pre sheaves So now we need to make uh, an S1 GM bispectrum. So first of all, we construct the S1 spectrum. Uh, and it's constructed also uh, in, in a standard way. So to every U, we just associate the spectrum C star and core omega U X mesh S. And that's a spectrum that consists of the following things. C star and core omega U X mesh S1, C star and core omega U X mesh S2, and so on. Right, instead of X, we can put a simplicial scheme as X plus mesh S1, X mesh S2, and so on. And then we get this construction that uh, uh, makes it a uh, C star and core omega X of U into a simplicial scheme is also a simplicial pre -shift. So then the sequence of simplicial pre shifts naturally becomes an S1 spectrum. And then the last step, we need to make it into S1 uh, GM by spectrum. Uh, where, so it's a GM spectrum of S1 spectra. So, it consists of the following things. So the first element is the S spectrum C star N core omega U X mesh S. The next is C star N core omega U. Uh, X smash GM smash one smash S. 
and so on. The next gonna be C star N core omega U X smash GM smash two smash S and so on, where GM smash one here is a simplicial scheme. Also, that's just a cone, simplicial cone of the inclusion of the point into the pointed uh, pointed variety GM. Sasha, a question for you again. Um, yes. would, you mind, would you mind describing the structure maps in step three? Oh, the structure maps in step three. Okay, so we have uh, C star N or omega X, sorry. U X smash S I smash S1 goes to C star N for omega from U to X plus smash S uh, S I plus one. So basically this this map is constructed in uh, as as the following uh, sequence. So first of all we have a map into C star N or omega U X plus smash S I smash S1 and then uh, it goes over here where uh, yeah the idea here is that uh, the C star N or omega X it's covariant with respect to the second argument. So when I have any simplicial uh, simplicial scheme and I put it on, on the second argument, I automatically get a simplicial resheaf here. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. Right, so here I did the fourth step. So here I got the S1 GM by spectrum, and this is everything we need. So now I can formulate the uh, following theorem. Uh, yes, sir, I didn't give a name to this. Let me call this by spectrum CN, C star N, or omega u x smash g smash s. So then our main theorem tells that this S1 GM by spectrum C star n core omega uh, x smash g smash s is locally equivalent to a motivic fiber replacement of the spectrum X smash MGL. So it's not a fiber replacement itself, but it's locally equivalent. In particular, it has the same homotopy groups as the uh, fiber, so it has the same local uh, homotopy groups as the uh, honest motivic fiber replacement of the spectrum uh, X smash MGL. Or more precise, to make it a fiber replacement, what I need to do, I just need to on every step on my of my GM spectrum my S1 GM by spectrum. I just need to apply the uh, fiber replacement in the local model structure without any A1 equivalences. Right, so if I do this on every step, so I'll smash S here. Uh, then this S1 GM by spectrum will be uh, the will be motivically fibrant and will be uh, weakly cool into the spectrum X uh, smash MG. Right, so in particular, if we wanna compute, say, 
sheaves of homotopy groups of uh, the spectrum MGL, the sheaves of homotopy groups will be the same as, so A1 homotopy groups of the spectrum X MGL computed on local Hinzel and U will be just homotopy groups of the of this uh, a1 uh, a1 uh, s1 spectrum c star and or omega of u x smash s right Okay, so that's the uh, main application. And similarly, we can do a similar result for other spectra that are similar to MGL that, uh, so other examples where we can state similar results are uh, MSL and MSP. So these are the spectra for special linear cobordisms that uh, symplectic cobordisms, uh, but let me, talk a bit uh, about how this, how this result is related with the uh, theory of frame correspondence. So basically, this result is just an application of the techniques that uh, are available to us uh, thanks to the theory of uh, frame correspondences. So the frame correspondences were introduced by Wojewodzki and developed by Garkush and Panin. Um, so here, let me look at a bit more general situation. Suppose E uh, is a top spectrum. And by top spectrum, I mean the spectrum that consists of top spaces. So E has spaces E0, E1, and so on, where En is a top space of some vector bundle Vn, where Vn is a vector bundle uh, over of rank n. Uh, over xn. Right, so the main examples of this Tom spectra suspension spectrum. Uh, x plus smash t, x plus smash t square, and so on. The second example that we already seen it's just a uh, x plus smash MGL or similarly we can think about x plus smash MSL and x plus, x plus smash MSP but we need to be a bit careful here because naturally there arises T square spectrum but Again, similar things can be done for these two spectra. But let me mostly concentrate on these examples, on the suspension spectrum of a smooth variety and on the just MGL spectrum. Uh, then uh, we can, if we have such a top spectrum, then we can introduce the E frame correspondences from U to X as just the home set in the category of pointed Nisnevit sheaves from U smash P smash N uh, into X plus smash E N. And by uh, Lemo Voivodsky, this set of uh, homes in the pointed category of Nisnevit sheaves has the following uh, geometric description. So all these homes can be described using the following uh, geometric data. So 
first of all, that's a closed subset into affine space An over U, which is finite over U. Second ingredient here is an et al neighborhood of Z in the affine space. And the next is the map from uh, the et al neighborhood W into the vector bundle Vn such that Z is the pre image of the zero section here. And also, the second part uh, of the data is just a map from et al neighborhood to uh, the variety X. So this map phi here that defines Z inside V, we call them a framing, and that's the frame, the E-framed correspondence uh, that arise with respect to the Tom spectrum E. So, uh, so yes, th so these sets of data describe these homomorphisms up to a certain equivalence where the data Z, W, phi, F is equivalent to Z, W prime, phi prime, F prime, if W and W prime are two uh, et al neighborhoods of the same closed subset Z, and all phi and phi prime, F and F prime coincide on their common refinement on W cross A and U. W prime. So in this data, we can just shrink our uh, et al neighborhood W and the correspondence uh, stays the same. So then that's a description of this home set. Excuse me, just a quick uh, question, Sasha. Mm -hmm. so, um, right. Does this also hold without A1 invariance? Uh, th that's here, we don't, we don't discuss any A1 invariance. So these are just, uh, so here we just talk about uh, pointed uh, and it's Chiefs. So there is no uh, A1 invariance here so far. Okay, thanks. thanks. Okay. And then if E is just a suspension spectrum, ST is just point T, T squared and so on, then this frame, the E-frame correspondences from U to X are just usual frame correspondences from U to X. Okay, when we consider just a suspension spectrum here instead of vector bundle Vn, we just have a trivial vector bundle over a point. Okay. So then we can use the theory of uh, frame correspondences to use this E-frame correspondences to construct a fiber replacement for the motivic spectrum uh, E. So again, we can do this in two steps. First of all, we construct an S1 spectrum MEX. That again, uh, I need to apply the C star construction to this uh, pre sheaf frame E from U to X, and then make it into an S1 spectrum. Right, and I, I didn't say what is frame E here. Frame E from U to X is just a co limit when N goes to infinity of frame N E from U to X, where I can embed frame N E from U to X into frame N plus one E from U to X as just, uh, I just need to embed A and U inside A N plus one U, and then instead of W, I take W across A one uh, and so on. So there's a natural stabilization process that uh, makes the level of this frame correspondence uh, uh, bigger. Right, so then I take the co-limit with respect to N, apply the simplicial construction C star 
and make it a, an S1 spectrum. So then what I get, I get this uh, S1 spectrum MEX, and then uh, we can make it into a G spectrum using the same construction as we saw before. It's a S1 GM spectrum consisting of MEX, MEX smash GM smash one, uh, and so on. So that's going to be an uh, S1 GM by spectrum. And then the general theory of frame correspondences tell us that MEGX is locally equivalent to a motivic fiber replacement of X smash E. So uh, M E G X is locally equivalent to the motivic fiber replacement of E smash X. And this motivic fiber replacement looks like this. Again, I just need to apply Uh, local fiber replacement. So MEX smash GM smash I F here is a fiber replacement of MEX smash GM smash I in local stable Nisnevich, stable uh, S1 stable Nisnevich model structure. Okay. So in particular, again, if we're interested in the, uh, yes, it's locally cool into this one, sorry, and uh, this one, this S1 GM spectrum is materially fibrant. and is equivalent to X smash, uh, sorry, smash E. So in particular, if we're interested in the uh, homotopy groups, then the homotopy groups can be uh, computed explicitly as the homotopy groups of the corresponding uh, S1 spectra. So that's the general result. It works for every uh, Tom spectrum. So it works for uh, the suspension spectrum, it works for MGL uh, and so on. And next, uh, for MGL and some other Tom spectra, we can further uh, make a reduction and make this, uh, this construction a bit simpler. So let me uh, show you the steps of the reduction we needed to do in order to obtain the uh, result for MGL. So the first step that is also a general one that works for every uh, Tom spectrum uh, uh, is the following. Instead of considering the frame correspondence, we can consider an object which we call normal frame correspondences. And that's the following thing. So we're gonna denote it as frame and E tilde from U to X. So that's the set of the following uh, geometric data. So first of all, again, we have over I to U, we have affine space A and U, and we have a closed subscheme of A and U, so Z inside uh, A and U is a closed locally complete intersection subscheme. 
and the map from Z to U is finite and flat. Then again, we can uh, we consider a et al neighborhood of Z inside A and U. But now instead of the whole map from W to the uh, vector bundle Vn, we just construct a map. We just need to consider a map from W to the base Xn of the vector bundle. So here Vn is the vector bundle over Xn from the definition of the Tom spectrum. Here we consider the map from the et al neighborhood Psi, the inclusion I, and then uh, instead of framing here, we have the isomorphism between the normal bundle of Z inside A and U and the induced vector bundle by this map Psi I from Z to Xn, right? And then the second piece of information is the map from Z into X. And then we have a similar equivalence relation where we can shrink a bit uh, at all neighborhood W. When we shrink at all neighborhood W, the normal bundle will not change. And we, we just need for, for this isomorphism uh, phi to stay the same uh, when we shrink the uh, et al neighborhood. So here, what we did instead of having the having a whole set of equ uh, equations that define z uh, inside w, uh, we just remember one piece of information. We just remember how these uh, equations give us an isomorphism between the uh, normal bundle of z inside w, which is the same as normal bundle of z inside a and u. And the, and the the actual the induced uh, bundle uh, on Z that's induced uh, from uh, X N, right? So that's uh, the normal frame correspondence. And as a side remark, it it looks especially nice where uh, X N is just a point, right? So where V N is just a trivial vector bundle of rank N, X N is just a point. Then uh, what we have here, this data is just equivalent to the following data. We have Z, which is finite flat over U. Uh, it's a locally complete intersection subscheme of A and U. And then we have a trivialization of a normal bundle of Z inside A and U. Right, um, yeah, let, let's say X is also a point here. So then we have just uh, locally complete intersection subschemes of A and U with a trivialization of their normal bundle. And that it's really very similar to uh, what's known in topology as frame cobordism. introduced by Pentragon. Right. Okay, so that's the first reduction step we need that instead of the whole framing, we just uh, keep track of the uh, isomorphism uh, on the normal bundle of the supports. We're gonna call Z here the support of the framed correspondence. So uh, it turns out that instead of the whole framed correspondence, we can just consider uh, the, tr the isomorphism of the normal bundle uh, of the support with the bundle induced from uh, Vn, right? So, so then the theorem says that if I construct in the same way the normal frame motif M E of X which is just C star frame E tilde 
of x c star frame e tilde of x meshes one and so on, then m e tilde, so there is a natural map from m e of x to m e tilde right on the level of frame correspondence. And when we have a frame correspondence uh, like this, then it defines z is if I consider not just a closed subset defined by the equations phi by the whole closed subscheme z defined by phi, then it's going to be a locally complete intersection. It's going to be finite flat, automatically going to, going to be flat over u. And then this phi going to induce the isomorphism between normal bundle of z inside a and u with the bundle induced from vn. So we have naturally a map from a usual framed e-frame e correspondence to the uh, normal e-frame correspondence just by forgetting some structure. Then it induces a map on the level of S1 spectra. And it turns out that, that this map uh, is locally an equivalence. So it turns out that uh, for any E-frame spectrum, we can uh, simplify our construction uh, like this. Okay. So that's the first step. It works for every Tom spectrum. And now let me uh, show you other steps that work specifically for the spectrum MGL. So for E equals MGL, uh, we can simplify the construction. Uh, further. Uh, so when E is MGL, then Vn we have here is just a tautological uh, vector bundle of rank N, right? So uh, this normal frame correspondence we're going to give us the isomorphism of the normal bundle of Z with the pullback of the tautological vector bundle. And uh, then it turns out that we can get rid of this uh, information as well. So we can introduce another object, which I call embedding n uh, from u to x. That consists of the following data. That consists of embeddings of z inside a and u, which is a locally complete intersection, so that the projection onto u is finite and flat, and then just a map from the support z uh, into, uh, into x. Right, so here, uh, then we have a natural map from a normal frame correspondence from e to u to x uh, into this embeddings and ux that just takes all this data, uh, z, w, z, uh, psi, phi and f, and just forgets everything, keeps only z uh, and f. Right, so then we can show that uh, this thing, after we apply the C star construction, uh, is an equivalence. So C star frame and E from U to X into C star embedding N from U to X is a, an equivalence of simplicial set, simplicial sets. For any smooth affine
scheme u. Right? So for the case of MGL, we can uh, forget about the framing and the only thing we need to keep track of is the, uh, is the support actually. And then the last step, uh, for MGL, we can also forget about the embeddings of this uh, of Z inside the affine space, right? So there is a natural map from embedding N ux into the set of core omega ux where we take this embedding data and just forget the embedding so we have we just keep z u and x so we need this map p here to be finite a flat LCI map from Z to U. So that's what I started with a set of omega correspondences. Right, and then it turns out that when I apply the simplicial construction again, so here I map to the uh, set of, to the zero, uh, zero simplices of the nerve, so when I apply, when I consider a map from embeddings n into nerve of core omega of u x, then it turns out that this is also is a weak equivalence uh, of simplicial sets when u is smooth and affine. And then this is how we arrive at the result I started with. So we start with uh, we start with the general construction uh, of a fibre replacement for every Tom spectrum M E G of X. Uh, then we reduce it to the spectrum that we get uh, using the normal framed correspondences. And then for MGL, we first of all reduce this normal frame correspondence to the spectrum that can be constructed using these embeddings. And then to the spectrum that we construct uh, using this uh, omega uh, correspondences. All right, and another uh, remark here, is that embeddings and ux uh, is representable uh, by a smooth scheme. So that's gonna be the smooth part. Uh, it's gonna be a LCI part of the Hilbert scheme of A and U and then C star, then the spectrum C star embedding X smash G smash S that we can construct from this data uh, will be a local model for Mativic fiber replacement. of X mesh MGL, which is representable just by co-limits, just directed co-limits of smooth simplicial schemes. Uh, right. So I guess it's a good point to stop here. That's uh, what I wanted to tell about.
Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Sasha. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Very impressive result. Um, let's see, are there some questions? Uh, I have a little question to ask. Um, so to what extent does this tell you about the various uh, P1 suspensions, the maps on the P1 suspensions of things like MGL or MSL, like negative or positive suspensions? Um, so naturally, these things, they, are, they live in the GM S1 spectra. Uh, so it's, it's not clear, but does it tell you about the P1 suspensions? Um, Mark, uh, no, if you yeah. positively um, uh, suspend uh, tone spectra, everything works. But yeah, yeah, but on the negative ones, it's unclear. Is that the story? Uh, negative ones are unclear, exactly. Oh, okay, good. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Sasha, so, maybe uh, this is uh, a question from Vani Pan. Uh, so in this remark, he described uh, the, uh, say, take uh, X to be point, uh, and uh, so take uh, local model for the motivic fiber replacement of, uh, of MGA. Uh, and it is representable, uh, as you described, by smooth simplicial coordinates of smooth simplicial schemes. Uh, can we just uh, work in with uh, this uh, model uh, proof cancellation theorem for uh, for this bispectra? The GM not, cancellation? Uh, yeah, means not taken back to uh, original uh, kind of uh, omega MJ correspondences. Mm. I, I'm not sure if you can. Uh, so your question is: Can you get the GM cancellation directly from this uh, from this description? Yes. Yeah. This is the question. Uh, I don't cold. know. It's hard to say. It's it's not clear to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was uh, the question, and <laughs> that I got an answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ayo. Can wait a little bit longer for possible other questions. And uh, maybe I will ask uh, one more question. Uh, uh, could you, Sasha, uh, take that uh, a little uh, bit uh, up? Say, okay, say for the step three. Uh, in the step three, uh, you, uh, you, you require you uh, is to be smooth and defined. Um, could you comment why <laughs> why it is enough? Means uh, that uh, typically one should expect that you should be taken uh, to be local Hinzelian. And uh, in your case, it is uh, smooth and defined. Uh. The point is why, why it works for smooth and fine because yes. uh, actually mm -hmm. we are able to construct an explicit homotopy in between. So if you have the same Z over U, but you have different embeddings of Z inside an affine space, then you can construct a homotopy that drags one embedding into the other embedding. And uh -huh. for, this, for this thing to work, it's just enough. U, U is, is enough to consider a smooth and fine U. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. And is it kind of the same principle which works for 
the previous step means for the step number two. Uh, Yeah, for the for the step number two, you mean uh, the step for a normal frame correspondences. Uh, this uh, you have shown to me the step number one, but go a little bit uh, downstairs. Yeah, step number Down. two. Yeah, here oh, is the theorem. Oh, the step number two goes from the uh, normal frame correspondences to the to the embeddings. Yes, again, the the reason why it works over the over this smooth uh, affine U is that we're able to construct an explicit homotopy that works over smooth and affine U. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the point here is that when we talk about this uh, normal framed, co normal framed uh, correspondence for MGL, then what we have mm -hmm. here, we have the, just a tautological vector bundle VN. And so the framing here is an isomorphism of a uh, of a normal bundle with a pullback of the tautological uh, vector bundle. And every vector bundle is isomorphic to the pullback of the tautological vector bundle over, a, over, the, uh, over, a fine, over the fine variety. So actually it turns out that uh, we can just, if, if we have two isomorphisms to the pullback of the tautological vector bundle, then again, what we can do, we can produce a homotopy that sort of transforms one into another in a consistent way so that it, uh, it makes this equivalence possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Okay, if we have some more questions for you, Sasha. I can read them. So, Tony okay. Nala asks, uh, what part of the geometric part of algebraic core bodies can be represented by these methods? What part of uh, of the geometric part of algebra of algebraic cobordism can be represented with these methods? So geometric part, you mean two n n diagonal? I guess. Uh, okay. So actually, locally, we can we can compute everything uh, using this method because if you have a, a a b homotopy group uh, of a one say MGL smash X on U, U is local zillion. Then using this methods, uh, this is gonna be equal to just uh, by A of C star and core omega of, sorry, uh, I guess I need to write A minus B here, right? Because this simple. Uh, we have simply show sphere of dimension A minus B, and here we have GM smash B smash U into X. Yeah, the point here is that, so GM, Smash B smash U is not local Henselian anymore, uh, but because everything here, all the sheaves we have here, uh, they are framed sheaves, and for the framed pre-sheaf, which is A1 invariant and with some additional properties that hold here, we know that it coincides with its sheafification on the open subsets of, of affine space. So actually, this computation here of the uh, A1 homotopy groups, it works not only for local Henselian schemes, but also works for all the uh, open subsets of affine space. So every uh, A1 homotopy group can be explicitly, can be computed uh, as the uh, as the usual simplicial homotopy groups uh, of this, uh, so sorry, I need to write down uh, S, S1 spectrum here. Okay, so when, when u is not local, we, we don't have this result, but when u is local in Zilin, uh, we can get this description. Okay. So maybe <laughs> we'll specify a little bit 
the previous question, not of mine, but uh, you try to answer, they uh, substitute you to be uh, stack of the field. So what's going on in this case? When you is what? You is stack of the field. Okay. And say uh, X uh, is a point. So you answer on, uh, on uh, question of the person uh, before mine. Uh, as I understood, you answer it like this: that you take this uh, pi a minus b uh, of this simplicial set, and so this is the answer. Yeah. Yeah, this simplicial spectrum, but it's as it's omega s one spectrum starting from the first. Uh, so we can actually rewrite it like this. We can say it's pi a minus b plus one of this simplicial set c star n core omega of gm smash b k plus smash s one. Mm -hmm. right, so then that's an explicit simplicial set uh, that computes the uh, for mode A1 homotopy of MGL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, good. Then there's two more questions, uh, at least two more questions, uh, Sasha. So mm -hmm. one of the questions says, um, is this the non borel more bordism of X? Is uh, non... non borel uh, more bordism of X? Number X. Uh, uh, I, I'm I'm not sure what's what's exactly uh, the question. Um, so maybe that's because the map map to X is not proper. I think that's the question. Oh, what's what's the difference with the uh, with with the, what's the difference with the algebraic cobordism of parallel more algebraic cobordism of, of this construction? Uh, yeah, the point is that Z here, first of all, Z. Is not is not a variety. Z can be a scheme, uh, and also yes, the map from Z to X is not proper. It's just just any map. So the only so Z here is a scheme, and the only thing we need from Z is that it's uh, the map from Z to U is a locally complete intersection map, and it's uh, finite and flat. Hmm. Okay, sounds good. Then another question from Ola Sande. Could you explain why you need to take the nerve of uh, of uh, core omega? Oh, that's that's because uh, that's because when we forget about the uh, when we forget about the embeddings here, uh, the point is that we need to keep track of the isomorphism between the tops of the heads because if it's, it's not going to work if I just take say an isomorphism classes of, uh, of the heads of uh, core omega just uh, will not get an uh, uh, will not get will not get a weak equivalence here so because when when we forget when we forget about the embeddings here uh, we still have to keep track of the isomorphism on, on, on the top Okay, great. Then uh, Kirsten asks um, if you can say something more about the relation with Hilbert schemes. Oh yeah, so the the relation with Hilbert scheme is is is, is pretty straightforward. So when uh, when x is a point, say then this embedding n of u uh, into the point, uh, that's just a, uh, by definition that's the sub sub scheme of a Hilbert scheme that can uh, consists of uh, LCI. Uh, 
of LCI schemes. And it's known that this, uh, so that th th this part of the Hilbert scheme is smooth. So this embedding, so, so this embedding, so U goes to embedding N from U to K is just represented by uh, a sub scheme of Hilbert scheme uh, of A N. That that then the sub scheme of Hilbert scheme of A N is exactly this uh, sub schemes of Hilbert uh, sub the sub schemes that form the Hilbert schemes that are uh, locally complete intersection sub schemes. Okay, so I seems that wraps up the question round. So thanks a lot, uh, Sasha, and also thanks to all the attendees. Um, so, Wonderful talk. And um, see you all tomorrow. Sasha, uh, merci beaucoup indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sasha. Uh, Thank you. Friedrich, how to say our pleasure in French? Mm. Our, ple our, our pleasure. Possibly, je vous en prie, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Do, do you see? I'm, I'm improving, Sasha, uh, during uh, during my stay in digital Paris. Very good. That's nice. <laughs> At least I promise uh, to learn uh, f uh, more uh, French words during the two weeks. That's it. You did. Okay.